Have you ever heard about hygienic testing or wondered what it is? Well, today I'm here with members of the OBA's tech transfer program and we're doing some hygienic testing on my bees. Dan, I want to ask you what specifically you're looking for to do this test. Uh, so when we're pulling out each frame, we're looking at the brood, uncapping it, and checking to see what the age of it is. Um, so as the pupas develop, um, it goes from being just pure white to different color eyes. We're looking for the pink, not so much the purple, more the pink and white eyed pupa. Okay. When we find frames with larvae of the right age, we put on these metal collars that each contain about 35 full cells of capped brood and we count the ones that are missing and then we freeze them with liquid nitrogen which kills the pupa underneath the cappings and then we put it back in the colony overnight. We're freezing the brood with liquid nitrogen. Okay Mel, I want to ask you a question. This of all one, the characteristics one. and traits that we can select for in our bees, why do you think that hygienic testing should be on that list? Well, hygienic testing uh, identifies two traits in bees. One of them is uh, knowing there's something wrong under capped brood. So they can sense through that membrane that uh, the larva or the pupa is damaged in some way. Either it's sick or it's infected or it's not developing. So they can, they can sense that through its smells and whatnot and they investigate by opening it up. So that's one trait of hygienic behavior. The second trait is uh, the removal of that uh, damaged or weakened brood. So they get rid of that problem by pulling it out and getting rid of it. So they minimize the infection or the damage to the hive by removing these sickened and weakened larva and pupa. So that's a good trait to have in the colony. Great, yeah, I totally agree. Okay, we're back. It's the next day, uh, as close to 24 hours later as possible. We're going to check on some results now. finished up that hygienic testing and some of the results were good and some of the colonies did poorly and that's great because then I can make um, I can make selections based on that and hopefully just continue breeding from the best so I made this video for a few different reasons and uh, one of them I just think it's generally sort of an interesting thing that we do with bees and another reason I just wanted to show you uh, maybe part of the reason why you know if you're paying thirty to forty dollars or more for a queen depending on where you are and how much how many queens you're buying um, this is part of the reason why because this costs me money um, costs me time and there's a lot of like details and record keeping that I have to be aware of throughout the years to try and make these selections um, so that's part of the reason that um, good queens cost a fair amount of money uh, but hopefully you're getting the value in return um, so then I just wanted to briefly mention my thoughts on hygienic behavior in general. It's you know one of the traits that I select for. It's not necessarily my number one criteria in selecting breeder queens. And there may be specific um, lines that I'm breeding that are always high in hygienic behaviors, um, but in general it's not the single most important trait that I select for in my bees. So the question is, why do I even bother doing it? Um, and I think the best reason that I have for doing it is potentially for resistance to American fowl brood. And there was a time when we thought maybe hygienic behavior would be a good resistant trait for varroa mites, 
and that doesn't really seem to be the case now. Um, but there's lots of good work showing that this is an excellent trait that can help your bees be resistant to American fowl brood and really all the brood diseases. But American fowl brood being the nastiest of them all, um, we want to have some resistance to that. And part of the reason for that is I'm in southern Ontario. Um, a lot of people ask where I'm from. I'm, I live like east of Toronto in southern Ontario here. And southern Ontario in general is a pretty dense beekeeping place. So there's lots of colonies in not a lot of space. And, um, and we have a big mix of commercial beekeepers, people who make their living from bees like me, and a lot of just small scale and hobbyist beekeepers around. And um, with that mix of a lot of different beekeepers in a very tight place, also a lot of like migratory pollination beekeepers are in southern Ontario for a lot of the year. And for all those reasons, um, American fowl brood can persist in places like this. And I don't want it. And anything I can do to help my bees resist AFB uh, is a good thing, I think. And hygienic behavior has been shown to be the, the best selection for that resistance. So that's why I do it and why I'm going to continue doing it and why I think it's a valuable trait to have in our bees. So I just wanted to sort of give you a little bit of insight on hygienic behavior and how we do the testing. And if you're interested in it, um, you're going to have to talk to some professionals in your area. If you're in the States, um, you know, try and get in touch with your state apiarist or some of the um, B teams that are working alongside universities throughout the country. And here in Canada, um, like personally, I rely on the OBA's tech transfer program for this kind of testing. And um, maybe some of the other provinces, I know out west in BC, they're, they're on board with it as well. So, um, depending on where you are, you're going to have to get in touch with your professionals in your area. Testing for hygienic behavior isn't for everyone. Like if you're not producing large numbers of queens for yourself or for sale, um, it's probably not worth your time to actually be making those selections on your own when you could just buy uh, maybe breeder queens or just queens from people that are already making these selections. So that's always a possibility too. Thanks for watching. The response to these videos has been great and I'm going to keep going as much as I can as long as I have time. So see you in the next video.